Welcome to our weekly devotion. It's Tuesday, June 21st, and this is day 35 since we unpaused our activities on campus here at Epiphany. I'd like to read for you a verse from Numbers chapter 20, verse 4. But let me put it into context. This is the state of the Hebrew people after God had delivered them from 400 years of slavery in Egypt and miraculously delivered them through the Red Sea. Of course, you know the story of the Exodus after the Hebrew people were safely on the other side of the Red Sea in the Sinai Desert. God closed it back up and killed the pursuing Egyptian army. Now I'd like to read for you that verse. Why then have you brought the Lord's assembly into this wilderness for us and our beast to die here? Now I'd like to talk to you today about perspective. At that moment in time, the Hebrew people had lost their perspective on God and the work that he was doing in their lives. And I think with all the bad news about the coronavirus pandemic, and the realization that we have that this isn't going to end anytime soon. It's easy to wonder what God is trying to do in our lives. And it's very easy to give in to fear about this virus. So I'd like to add some perspective from God's word so that we can avoid what the Israelites did. And that is to start complaining and not looking at the bigger picture, which is God's purpose. What I'd like to do today is to change your perspective from fear to having confidence in God's work in your life. So let's get started. I've listened to the news, I've read the statistics, I've seen the state of the pandemic here in Arizona. In my opinion, for my own life, I've pretty much thrown in the towel and said, at some point in the future, it's likely that I will catch this virus. Now I'm taking all the precautions that we're told to take, but I'm out in the public quite frequently and that's my own conclusion. Now most people when they're diagnosed with a coronavirus are first to admit, I don't want to die in ICU on a ventilator. To me, when a Christian says that, that's kind of like the Old Testament nation complaining in the desert, shaking their fist at God and saying, why did you bring us out here so that we and our animals could all die? So let me add some perspective from my own life, how I view this coronavirus if I were to contract it. Now, the first type of contraction could be if I'm asymptomatic and I wouldn't even know about it unless I signed up for the mass surge in testing. The second thing is I'm asymptomatic, but I've been diagnosed with it. It means that I'm going to have to self quarantine up to 14 days, according to my doctor, following the CDC guidance. Now, let's look at that 14 days at home. That means I'm gonna have three meals a day, I'll have a hot shower every day, and I get to sleep on clean sheets. Well, boo hoo, that's such a hard thing to do. I'm certainly gonna be reading God's word during that time, trusting in his promises, and praying that I'll be delivered safely through that contraction of the illness. Now, what's the next thing that could happen? Well, I could be symptomatic. I could develop symptoms that are mild or severe. That still means I'm gonna get three meals a day, hot shower and sleep on clean sheets. Boo hoo, that's pretty bad. I'm certainly gonna be reading God's word, trusting in his promises and praying that it doesn't get worse. But candidly, even if the symptoms are more severe, but not enough to go into the hospital. I know looking back at my journey with God that I have been in far more dangerous situations than that, and he's always delivered me. Well, what happens if my symptoms get so severe that I need to get hospitalized? 
Well, let me get this straight. I have health insurance. I will be cared for by experts, and if needed, they will apply treatments to try to ease my symptoms. My family can't visit me, but it's time to count my blessings in that situation. And all the good things God has brought to me, like competent medical care during that hospitalization. And what a great time, once again, to trust in God that his promises will come true in my life and that I will be delivered through it. Now let's look at the next situation. I go to ICU and let's say I'm put on a ventilator. Well, God's love, grace, forgiveness, strength, guidance, and eternal promises are not banned from that ICU room. I get that my family won't be able to visit me. That'll be hard but God will be with me 24 seven and nothing gets nullified by the hospital's rule. Now let's say that it gets so severe that my life is indeed in danger. Is that a bad thing that I'll be delivered to the kingdom of heaven if I die in that room? Well, I'm not happy about leaving my life behind. But if my body is fighting so severely and damage is being done to my organs, I can think of far better things, pardon me, far worse things in life that could happen to me than being delivered instantly into the kingdom of heaven and being freed from all that suffering and that virus and that disease. Well, let's say I get well. Well, the Hebrews did go to the promised land and those 40 years in the desert, well, that was used by God to teach them something. Just like getting well would teach me something. Just like journeying through this pandemic can teach me something. In her book, A Beautiful Desert, Marlena Graves writes this. He brought us out to save us, to show us his power, to offer his comfort, and to put to death whatever is in us that is not of him. We need to have a good perspective about this pandemic. It's certainly good to have a healthy fear of it and take precautions. But this should not keep you up awake at night. God is with you. His words and his promises have never been more truer or sure, and they will always be. It's a good time to depend on him with prayer and look for his blessings in your life. And to assure yourself once again that through faith in Jesus Christ, as your sole savior from sin, you will be delivered from this pandemic whether it's being restored to health or into the eternal kingdom that Jesus has prepared for you. And now may God bless you with his peace, his comfort, and his strength this day.